Welcome to the Make It Sew series, a beginning sewing series by SureFit Designs. Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, whimsically referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch. I'm going to show you one additional technique to use in applying a waist treatment to your pants or skirt. Some women like to have an elastic just at the back of their bodies, but the front waistband be flat. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. The instructions for this, believe it or not, are actually found in the children's kit instruction book on page 17. There's all kinds of information in this children's instruction book that are, is very, very applicable to the adult patterns. And you can apply this technique onto a pair of pants or onto a skirt. The example that I have prepared here today is a pair of pants and it's just a short sample. No one would ever wear their pants this short, or at least I wouldn't. And so what I have prepared here is you're looking at the back of the pant and the, this is the inside. I've sewn the inseams right here and I've sewn the crotch curve around through to the front. It's been trimmed and pressed open. And so this is the front of the pants right here. And I have left the uh, hip fitting darts in the front of the pants. Now this is a good application for anybody who wants to pull pants up, not bother with a zipper, not bother with a regular waistband. And it works well in a woven fabric as long as you're not a diamond shaped hip person. If you're a diamond shaped hip person, then you might need to consider doing this out of a knit fabric so that everything gives a little bit more. But the elastic, or excuse me, but the back is going to have elastic in it. And so uh, some of our woven fabric that has a little bit of lycra in it or spandex in it might work just fine. And so I'm just going to unpin the side seams here. I just wanted you to get the orientation for how this was all coming together. And on the back, what the instructions tell you to do is the casing for the elastic at the back is cut all in one with the body of the pant. And so this notch right here, I'll just put the elastic behind so you can see that notch. That notch is indicating the waistline. And so what I needed to do was build the pattern up twice the width of the elastic plus a seam allowance. So this is one inch wide elastic, so this would have come up two and five eighths. And so it's going to come over on top of it like this. And you'll also notice that the raw edge of that waist edge has also been turned and pressed in three eighths of an inch. So now I'm going to take that and fold it over on the one inch fold line and then I will take this to the sewing machine and stitch this down. And I just want to put a couple of pins in to hold it in place. So we'll go to the machine. You will back stitch. And that finishes off sewing the casing for the elastic. And again, I'm using a contrasting color of thread so that you can see exactly what is happening. Now, the elastic that you're going to cut for the back of the pants, what you're going to do, and again, it's going to depend on how stretchy your elastic is, so you're going to have to do a little bit of testing. In one of the other lessons, I talked about different kinds of elastic and how much they stretched and how much you needed to remove based on your measurement. But for an elastic half back, just as a general guideline, you're going to take your waist circumference and divide it in half. So let's say you were 30 inches around. Divide that in half, and then, so that half measurement is 15, and then you're going to remove one to two inches from the elastic because obviously it is going to stretch. And so what you might want to do is cut it just one inch short of your half measurement and just hold it against the back of your body. And then of course if you need to you can shorten it at that point. Then I put a big safety pin on one end of the elastic and I'm just going to feed this through the casing 
and just pull it through. When you get down to the last portion of feeding this through, you've got to be really careful that it just doesn't go whip and pull through the other side. And so very carefully, I'm just manipulating this inside the casing. And so what I'm going to do now that I've got the elastic showing at this edge, with it like this, and I'm not going to take that safety pin out yet, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch it down. I'm not going to do it quite on the 5 8 inch line. I just want to make sure that it's nice and stable in there and that this isn't underneath the presser foot there. Now I can remove this pin and that stabilized that end of the elastic. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm very carefully, I'm going to move the casing over top of the elastic. So there we go. There's the raw edge of the side seam. And I'll put this underneath and I'll do the same thing. Not on the seam allowance, but maybe about a quarter to three eighths of an inch in is where I'm just stabilizing this. So the elastic is being secured into the casing. And now I can remove this pin. Okay, so there's the elastic casing in the back of the pants like that. And now what you want to do on the front of the, the pants is prepare a sew-on waistband. And this sew-on waistband is the length of the waist edge that's remaining, of course, on the front of your body. This also is two inches wide, plus now there's a seam allowance at the top and at the bottom of the uh, waistband. And I have stabilized this with interfacing. Once again, notice that there is no interfacing on the seam allowances because that does create bulk. This little notch here is indicating the center front of the pants. If you were doing this and putting this technique onto a skirt, you likely wouldn't have a seam up center front, but you still would have a notch for center front so that you'd put the marking in the right place. You'll also notice that I have pressed over this inside edge that's going to turn on the inside. So I'm taking the right side of the waistband and I'm placing it to the right side of the pants waist edge on the front only and just put in a couple of pins and then we'll take this to the sewing machine and stitch a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So now this waistband has been stitched on to the front of the pants and that looks good. So that folded edge that we had is right here and that's going to fold over. Now one thing that you need to do is you need to take this seam allowance and you need, <coughs> excuse me, you need to press it in towards the waistband. You need to trim and grade this. As a review, trimming cuts the seam allowance down by half, and grading you've seen me do before, and that's cutting down one of the seam allowances down by half again. In this case, I'm cutting down the waistband seam allowance, and the grading helps to reduce the bulk. Now what we're going to do is take the side seams, and again, this would be now the side seams of either your pants or your skirt, and you're going to place right sides together, and you want to pin up to the folded edge of the, uh, the waistband in the front, and we're going to sew from there down. And now you will sew this with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And you'll do the same thing on the other side. 
Now what you're going to do is take this seam allowance and you're going to fold the back in towards the front and then you're going to take the front waistband and pull it over top so it completely encloses the back like this and it makes a really nice clean finish there. Now right now because the back where the elastic is, is being pushed in towards the front waistband, that means that both of these side seam allowances are being pushed forward. So in order to have your seam allowances pressed open, if that's what you choose to ultimately do, you will need to clip the seam allowance right there and that allows the waistband portion of it to go inside the front so that that comes over top and then your side seam allowances can be pressed open. And at this point, before I went any further, I'd likely take this to my serger and serge each of these seam allowances so they were nice and neatened on the inside. And in the lesson on seams, if you don't have a uh, serger, I showed you a lot of other options for finishing off the seam allowances. So please consider doing one of those. So at this point now, the front waistband is covering up your elastic, your seam allowances are open, and I just need to put this in position so that I can pin it, and then ultimately I'll be taking it to the sewing machine and stitching it. So that's going to go like this and this folds around the front like this and I need to clip this back seam allowance as well on the other side I should say so that that will open up and this bit of the elastic turns towards the front and the front comes up and over top. I've got a bunch of thread there. My machine didn't like sewing through all of that elastic, so I'm just going to push it onto the inside for right now. But under normal circumstances, I would trim that all up. And then that comes over top and gets pinned. Okay, and so that's what the front looks like. And now the back looks like this. And at this point, what I would do is take this to the sewing machine and I would do what's called stitch in the ditch which is taking the waistband now and stitching from here around and I've got my pins on the wrong side to do that so if I just switch them over really quickly I can stitch in the ditch and show you how to do that. Keep in mind when you stitch in the ditch you really want to be using the same color of thread because if you miss the ditch, <laughs> then it's not going to show or be quite so obvious. So you just put this into the sewing machine and wear that waistband on the front attached to the front of the pants or skirt. You're just going to set the needle down right in that seam allowance. And you can backstitch if you want to. I'm not going to here because I've got a lot of threads in there that need cleaning up. And so I would just pull my threads to the inside and tie them. But now very carefully what I'm doing, and I should do this with the needle in the down position because if you have to stop and maneuver or manipulate, you want to make sure that nothing in your fabric isn't shifting underneath. So I'm right in the middle of that seam allowance there. And I'm going right in what's called the ditch. I miss the ditch just a little bit, but again, you get the idea. If it was done with the same color of thread, that would all blend. And actually, I would likely pick that out and just restitch it because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I really like things to look nice. But there you have a flat front, an elastic back, and gives you lots of options for a waist treatment for either a skirt or for a pair of pants. So. In this Make It Sew series, you've now seen how to set on a traditional waistband, you've seen this elastic half back, and you've seen how to sew 
an elastic around on a pair of like leggings or leotards or that kind of thing. So you've got lots of options as a beginner seamstress. If you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that you have, and if you're not already a member of the Surefit Designs community, I do invite you to join. And you can do that in three easy steps. While you're in the Surefit Designs Learning Center, make sure that you sign up for the Surefit Designs newsletter, and you're going to find the sign up form on the bottom of most of the pages in there. And number two, if you're watching this video in YouTube, at the bottom there'll be like buttons and subscribe buttons. I certainly ask that you to participate in our YouTube channel. It's SureFit Designs. And lastly, we now have a Facebook group page and people, seamstresses from all over the world are interacting with one another, asking questions and showing their project work that they've done with SureFit Designs. And please make sure you join us there. It's simply SureFit Designs excuse me, it's uh, Facebook forward slash groups forward slash SureFit Designs. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you the next time.